All right, in today's video, I've been putting up quite a bit of videos lately on the down command and the down in motion. How important that is to teach your dog. And I've said in the past videos that I've just done with this, it is a rare dog that you are ever going to see in the public that can do a down while in motion running or out from an owner. That is absolutely rare. You will hardly ever see it. It's very difficult to achieve well. So overall, it's probably the most difficult thing to do in dog training when it's done well. And done well, absolutely the life-saving thing for your dog. The control, having a dog stop when you tell them immediately, out from you. Jack, come. Down. is critical. You can absolutely save their life with this. And if you can do that with your dog, you have master control over your dog. That is high level dog training. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna show you two young German Shepherd puppies that we've been doing this with. You're gonna have Bruno. Up, down, good. And Jack. Jack, come. Down. Both around seven months old. Now, there's steps to this, getting this done well. It is not easy at all. And ask the owners of this that took them maybe three weeks to a month just to get the first steps of this, the baby steps. How to get your dog to flatten out just from standing here and having them in front of you to flatten out perfectly with no butt first. Down. 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 That in itself, to be able to stand tall and tell your dog to down, and they do it immediately, first time told, and flatten completely to the floor, takes many, many steps to achieve. That looks easy, but it is very complex. And the owners always struggle to get up tall and be able to tell their dog down. It takes people weeks, if ever, without help professionally to get that done. Absolutely difficult and makes owners go crazy. <laughs> I mean, they suffer <laughs> trying to get that down perfectly with that flattening and from a standing position with no hand help. Now, that's just in front. Now, once you have that, now the game becomes to get the dogs out from distance, right? So, just to give you an example, let's say Jack here, seven months old. First thing, if he can down quickly, right next to the owner. Down, no clicking, I didn't click. The next things would be a little further away, now, what you're going to see here encompassing as well, it's not just the down. What's involved in the whole thing of getting that down in motion, your dog needs a really good come command. Then attached to that come command, the down has to be phenomenal and already taught at a distance and stopping. So now when you say come from distance and they come running to stop immediately when told, 
another stage and also what's done with that. So now you have a come, a down first time told and flattening immediately where they were told and when they're downing they're holding an automatic stay position until told otherwise. Right? So then you have a come again from it. But as in the video you see all the dogs that are told, the moment that they, they're told to down, they never move again unless told to come again. Here come. Down. Right. So it's not just the down that's attached to this. Their comes have to be phenomenal. Their downs by itself have to be great. First time told. And holding an automatic stay position when told to down with no help and no stay words. It's implied behavior. So come down wherever they are and they hold forever until told to release from that command. So you have many things encompassing that one behavior. First thing you need to have a good come before you start down in motion work. Critical. That come needs to be phenomenal. And no matter what is going on, that dog needs to come. As the trainer, for me, I'm always thinking real life, real world obedience or whatever in dog training I'm doing. So, always thinking through the scenarios of what could possibly happen in real life that I would ever need my dog to do. So, with the down command, we want the dog flattening at us, learning how to just drop straight away, very close, right at us. Down. No clicking. I didn't click. Then, we want to see the dog from distance come and stop halfway when we tell them. Check come. Down. If I throw something, when the dog wants something badly, their favorite toy, like here you'll see with Jack, his stick, when the owner throws it, can she stop him on the way to it? And beautifully, I mean, he skids into the ground just before the stick, right? And drops and holds and does not continue to go grab the stick when it's that far away from his face when he dropped, right? Perfectly. Drops before the stick. Don't keep going and grab the stick and then drop. Perfect. And wait to be released and then he goes and grabs his stick. Good boy. Good boy. Come on, Jack. Good boy. So with Jack, what do we have? We have downs right at us. We have downs from far distance coming and stopping him. We have downs while he goes away from us and we send him to something and he drops immediately. Covering my bases and my angles of whatever could I need with this dog, I have to make sure the dog understands whatever situation I could possibly be being in life that I would ever need to stop him, I have. That is what you should be doing as a dog trainer, right? Making sure all your angles are covered because if Jack just has a down coming and halfway stopping, does not mean at all that he will stop on the way to the stick that that down transferred to that down. That's not how that works. So we had to work both of those scenarios for Jack to be able to do it on the way and to the stick coming to and away to the stick, right? It's not that one down transfers to that down. Then it's eaten. You have to work each scenario. So if I threw something and Jack was on his way or any dog was on their way to get what I threw, what if I ever need to stop him 
and I put them in danger from them chasing, especially a ball that would continue to bounce and keep going, and that they ran out and they put themselves in danger from following the ball too far, an accident happened, we didn't mean to throw the ball that far, and we were able to stop the dog. If we weren't able to stop the dog in motion, he just kept following the ball, we could possibly put his life in danger. So, now, here with Bruno, other seven month old puppy. We're working Bruno now for the first time out in the yard with the acres. So, after weeks of getting him to be able to flatten out and get that down, now it's time to put this to the test. So, what we did here was we took out both puppies. The black puppy we're using as a decoy. So, they're best friends. They live in the house together. They do everything together. They go out in the yard and play for hours together. They're the best of friends. Now, Bruno's further advanced. He's the one that I'm training. So, Bruno's the focus knowing that Jack, the black dog, will just be out there as a decoy. So what we did here, we had Bruno in a, a stay positions. We call him, he downs, Good. down, Perfect. Now, with the other dog around as the decoy, will Bruno stop if the other dog keeps going? Right? So in real life, if you had your dog out with other dogs and the other dogs just kept running wild and they're running with them, can you stop your dog immediately while the other dogs are moving? Right? Most people can never do that. And the dog would just keep following the other dogs and just not hear you and just keep doing what they're doing. So that's why we had this scenario with the black dog out there moving around and being with him and taking off with him and we're focusing on Bruno of what he's supposed to do and let the black dog do whatever he's going to do just to kind of mess with him. So you see the comms. We stop Bruno while the other dog's around. Perfect. Bruno, come. Down. Good. And he does perfectly, even with the other dog running around and doing what he's doing and running with him. Immediately, he stops when he's told to do it. Now, also, something you need to think about when you're out there working with a dog too. You're gonna see here at Bruno, we call, sometimes we stop him, we call him again, we stop him again shortly after the first one because he, the dogs need to understand. If I call you, I down you. It could be only the ones and then I call you all the way in if I want you. Could happen that I call you, I down you, I call you, I made a mistake, I didn't realize that I shouldn't have called you, that something was coming or danger and I have to restop you again immediately. That's why sometimes we throw in the come, a down, come and immediately another down again and sometimes we'll throw a third one in again. Bruno, come. Down. Good boy. Sit. Bruno, come. Down. Bruno, come. Bruno, come. Down.
Bruno, come. Down. Good boy. Bruno, come. Come on, baby. Go. Yes. Good job. Good. Perfect. Yeah. Because we need to know for sure that we can call the dog in and stop them as many times as we want just in case we ever make a mistake and call the dog into something that we didn't mean to do or see something that was going to put them in danger. So we have automatic responses. Coming, down, bam. Come, oops, sorry. Down. Thank God I was able to down him again before I put him at risk because I didn't see that other thing coming. That's why you have to teach all those scenarios because if you don't change the scenario for the dog, they're only going to learn it in one context. So if you don't put in multiple downs sometimes, they're only gonna do it once for you if that's the only way they've ever done it. So in dog training you have to always be thinking about all the things that could possibly happen for you to prep the dog so that they're not thrown off if you change a scenario you've never done before they just don't know how to do it or think through it and they just can't perform it because they've never learned how to think on the move. Very, very important dog training and very rare you see that. So as a trainer you always have to be making sure you're covering bases of what a dog could possibly see in life if ever those things were to come up. You never know. And here, the black dog that's running around, we decided to take a few minutes and teach him how to perform that down as well and just a few minutes later we have this down. and perfect now that we took a few minutes to teach the black one both together do it down immediately together and then here Sometimes you just got to let them run all the way in and just give reward, no hold offs, so you don't make them down crazy. Good, very good. Okay, and good. And that's what you see here from Bruno. Just let him come in no downs, play with him, reward. It's not always a down either, so this way you don't ruin the come command. There's a lot, a lot of things attached to this to make this so good, it's so complicated. And when all of our clients start going through this, they cannot believe every little detail of how complicated. When you're starting to do your downs, the come will suffer. If the dog is great with come, the moment you start adding stops and motions, their comes start to suffer. So then you've got to fix the comes with the downs to make sure all the speed and all the precision and all the things just come together so that there's no fading of another command when you're trying to get the one command. So complex and complicated. I mean, this is why you never see it in the public. It is so hard to do. But well worth doing and absolutely you should aim to be able to do that with your dog. Unfortunately, you're going to find very few training places that will ever take you through that process because it's way too complicated for the trainer as well and most don't really know how to do it well. Unfortunately, that's the truth. So, until next time, hope you enjoyed the video. I try to give as much information as possible so people are aware of 
the things we show are not just that simple and yeah that's nice <laughs> right so just people to be aware of how complex certain things are and what it takes to achieve things so hope you enjoyed the video Richard Hines Miami Dog Whisperer